let's play charades. Who am I? If you guessed Pitfall Harry, then you're right. Good old Harry got his start in Pitfall, a classic Atari game. But he didn't start acting like an asshole until the NES came along. Super Pitfall. One of the most deceptive uses of the word super in video game history. You wanna know why? You wanna know why this game super sucks? You wanna see how hard they cranked up the diarrhea dial? Just watch. Nice. Fucking beautiful. The first ladder you see drops you into a pit where you get killed by a bird or a bat, whatever it is. And even if it wasn't there, I'd fall on the spikes. So it's basically death insurance. Let's put every kind of obstacle we can possibly think of in the very beginning of the game. You know, I'm disappointed. Couldn't there have been lava on top of the spikes with fire sharks swimming in it? Couldn't there be more spikes coming from the sides ready to close in and squash me while stabbing at the same time? How about some laser cannons and upside down volcanoes? You want to be even more efficient? Why even have the ladder? Why not just start the game falling down the pit? Fucking assholes. <sighs> Talk about a beginner's trap. They sure nailed it. Well, let's talk about Pitfall Harry. He looks like Luigi, and there's something wrong with his walk cycle. Looks like he's hopping on one foot. But the most ridiculous thing about this guy is the way he dies. What is that all about? He goes fucking ape shit. It even kills the enemies that are nearby. My only theory to what's going on here is that there's an angel and a devil waiting to take him to either heaven or hell. It's first come, first serve, and they both want him real bad. So they're constantly there, waiting for him to die. And then as soon as he dies, they both grab his arms, fighting over his body. That's the only explanation that I can think of. The enemies in this game are a total joke. Spiders? Frogs? Are frogs a common hazard that you would face in a jungle? Has anyone ever died by getting attacked by a fucking frog? And he uses a gun? Who the hell goes around shooting frogs? Harry can't shoot while ducking, and that's a big problem because most of the enemies are too short. You can hit the frogs only if you time their jumps very carefully. The spiders, the scorpions, and just about everything else, it's like tough shit. Does Harry have a problem with his arms? He can't point the gun in any direction other than right in front of his own fucking face? The number one complaint that I have with this game is that all the items are invisible. They only appear when you jump in a very specific spot. Everything from bullets to special objects that you need in order to unlock certain parts of the game, everything is invisible. So unless you know where everything is, you're just gonna have to go through the whole game jumping around like a fucking idiot. The only items in plain sight are the gold, but the gold has no purpose other than getting points. Unless you're playing an Atari game, nobody really cares about getting a high score, it's more about just finishing the game. So the gold is there just to waste your fucking time. You gotta convince yourself to just walk past it, but that's hard to do because not only is it the only thing in the game that's not hidden, but it flashes! Like, ooh, look at that flashing gold, so tempting. But no, just pretend it's not there. The only other item I found is a crazy bug-eyed animal in a cage. I have no idea what that is or when you'll ever need it. I don't know, could you ever think of any way to use an animal in a cage? I can't. The graphics do a lot of flickering. There's always something popping out at the edge of the screen, like the NES can't handle its awesomeness. The weirdest thing I ever saw happen was that for a fraction of a second, there was like a red clone. Like, who's that supposed to be? The ghost of Pitfall Larry? Playing this game is like driving an old beat-up car. You're always afraid it's gonna break down. What happened here? I'm frozen? Okay, well, I guess I'm just gonna... Oh, okay, now he dies? I guess the angel and devil were busy looking for him that time. Nothing about this game makes any sense. The whole layout was designed at pure random. Like, why are there so many ladders that lead to nowhere? Why is there an anti-gravitational lake that's bottom leads to thin air? Down is the worst direction you could possibly go in this game, because you're always going to end up falling and killing yourself. Oh, that's great. They did that on purpose. It looks like you could just barely steer yourself to the left, but that fucking platform's tucked in too far. 
Falling is your worst nightmare. There's one part where you have to climb up, 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 and if you make one mistake, you're falling down, down, down. You have no idea how long it took to get that far. Now I gotta do it all over again. This game is unholy. It's fucking made in hell, I swear. Oh shit, what the fuck was that? That's fucking scary. You're just walking around and a head run amok from Easter Island comes flying towards you. Okay, how did I survive that? The weirdest thing is when the face doesn't even come after you a second time. It just sits there. Then if you walk away and come back, it disappears. So where did it go? Who knows? Who cares? This game is a lot like Mylon's Secret Castle and Simon's Quest, because the whole thing is about secrets. In order to access certain parts of the game, you have to jump into walls. Who would think to do that? It's like in Simon's Quest where you have to kneel down by the wall, holding a red crystal, and wait for a tornado to come. Okay, well maybe it's not that cryptic. This is the last part of the game, some kind of dungeon with skulls and shit. Kind of reminds me of the Temple of Doom. I like this part for two reasons. One, it's the only part in the game that has different music. What a relief. The other thing, it's the only place that has enemies that are tall enough to shoot. I don't know why everything else had to be so small. Like those snails! Killed by a fucking snail! Oh, must be Pitfall, um, Gary. That's the princess, or whatever she is, just some girl you're trying to rescue. When you get to this part, your first instinct is to get over there and rescue her. Hopefully that means you beat the game, right? But no, that's some wishful thinking right there. You can walk right through her, you can try to hump her, but nothing happens. The game doesn't even give you a clue. You're just supposed to know that you gotta collect a bunch of secret items before you can rescue the girl. But if you went down to this dungeon place, you're basically trapped. There is a way to get out, but it requires a lot of climbing, where one slip can drop you all the way back down. You're better off just resetting the game. So we're jumping around in thin air, trying to find different suits like spades, hearts, and diamonds. What purpose does this have? I found the princess. Does he need to play poker with her or something? Finding these items, like I said, unless you have a strategy guide or a walkthrough telling you where all these things are, it's just a guessing game. Even worse, jumping around can put you in danger. Come on, a waterfall coming down from the ceiling? Ah, death by a frog. Is this girl really worth all this aggravation? Look at her, she looks like a fucking rag doll. There's no limit to how secretive this game is. There's actually a part where you have to warp by jumping into a bird. You saw that, right? I'm not making that up. There's a warp zone hidden in a bird! How would you ever figure something like that out, unless it's by complete accident? If you try touching the rest of the birds in this game, they kill you. So if you've learned anything from that, it's to avoid them. How stumped and bored would you need to be to start thinking, hmm, I guess I'm gonna try jumping in the birds. How the fuck is a kid in 1987 without internet supposed to figure out how to beat this game? So you get all the items, go back into the secret wall, find the princess, and then you win, right? No, the music changes, but the game still goes on. Is there any clue, any dialogue box, anything to give you a hint what to do next? Of course not! You just have to assume to go back to the beginning of the game. That means climbing out of this dungeon, finding another secret passageway, and work your way back. But you're not supposed to go back to the exact start point. That would be a little too easy to guess. So how about this? You fall off a random platform, the screen starts to glitch, and then you win. <laughs> and that's it. Don't you love games that just end with a black screen with plain text? At least they spelled congratulations right. The third line's a little off-center, but other than that, I don't see any errors. I guess that's why they kept it so short. They knew they'd fuck it up. But the last sentence mystifies me. Please try another world? What other world? As far as I know, there's a second quest. But it's the same exact game. The only difference is that the items are all in different spots. And after that, the game just keeps repeating over and over and over again, like a never-ending Easter egg hunt. But that'd be like if the Easter eggs were full of diarrhea and the Easter Bunny was shitting all over your face.
but I've had enough with bunnies and shit lately, so I'm gonna end this right here. What kind of masochist would you have to be to beat this game more than once? If you did it one time, what would you have to prove to do it again? You'd have to be some kind of fucking idiot.